the business keeps record of all the payments and all the deposits in their bank account. So they keep a record of all the electronic transfers, debit card payments, direct deposits, um, when they receive money and they issue a receipt. So all the payments uh, do record it and have a full uh, knowledge and understanding of exactly what happened in the business in connection with the money. So the balance of the bank account of the entity should then be the same as the balance in the bank statement because just as the business will record all the entries with the bank, the bank will have an account for the business and they will record all the entries in their books. But it will never be like that. There will always be something that's not the same. So either the business can make a mistake or the bank can make a mistake and then you have to correct it wherever the mis mistake was made. Or we recorded entries and the bank must still do record those entries. Or um, in the bank there's a lot of entries that we can only record when we receive the bank statement. So this bank statement is then a source document that we use to record all the mistakes and omissions in the books of the business. So I'm looking here at a bank statement. So if you look at this, you see that the deposit is on the credit side, the EFT is on the debit side. And the reason for that is in our books, the bank is an asset to us. So in our books, the bank account is an asset and the asset increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. In the books of the bank, as you can see here, they put the deposit on the credit side and they put the money taken out of the bank on the debit side. So in the books of the bank, they recorded that we are a liability to them because we deposit money and in the future they will have to give me my money back. And the liability increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. So everything that I will have in my bank account on the debit side, they will have on the credit side. And everything in my bank account on the credit side, when I make payments, they will record it in the debit side. Now what I want to do is, I want to show you when we receive the bank statement and we check it with our uh, entries in our cash receipts and cash payments journal, we will see that there are some entries that is not recorded. And one of them is, for instance, a deposit. So it is possible that one of our customers can um, send an EFT to our bank account to deposit money in our bank account. If they in another bank, as we, what we are, it can take 24 to 48 hours before the deposit will show in our bank. But we might have recorded it immediately. So we can have a deposit in our bank account that must still be recorded in the books of the bank and they will record that deposit on the credit side. Okay, so that means if we recorded a deposit and they still have to do it, we will show in our bank reconciliation statement outstanding deposit. And now we must just remember there's a debit column, there's a credit column. You do the bank reconciliation as the bank would record it. So it means the credits is the plus and the debits is the minus. So outstanding deposit will be recorded on the credit side. So for instance, a thousand rand. So when we check our books and we see that there's a thousand rand in our books for a deposit and they have not recorded it, it means that we will show in the bank reconciliation statement in the future 
the bank will have to record this. On the other hand, we could have made a payment um, after the bank statement was printed out or after the bank sent us the bank statement. So it means that we can have here on the credit side a EFT for, by for instance, 500. This does not appear on the bank statement, so it means that they have to record it on the bank statement because we've already done it, so we will show outstanding EFT. And we will record the 500 in the bank recon on the debit side. Okay, then the things that will appear in the bank that we still have to record. Okay, so the first thing, for instance, is that they can have on the credit side a direct deposit from someone that deposited money as rent. So it means in their books they will show there's a direct deposit for 2,000 rand. We haven't recorded it because we only find out about this direct deposit when we receive the um, bank statement. So it means I will go and show in my books, either on the debit side of the bank or in my cash receipts journal, that I received money for rent income, 2000 So because I haven't recorded it, I still have to go and record it. Then, for instance, they can have on the credit side amount for um, stop order, 500. Okay, so as, as soon as we see the bank statement, we realize that they paid a stop order on behalf of us. So it means that we have to record it in our books. Now, where will we record that stop order on the credit side of my bank account because it's money being paid out. And that is for instance for insurance. Okay, now what do we see? We are showing this stop order on the credit side, but the bank also uh, showed it on the credit side. So that means the bank made a mistake. It was not supposed to be on the credit side, it was supposed to be on the debit side. So to correct that mistake that the bank made, we will correct it in the bank reconciliation statement. And I will show that that 1,500 must actually be on the debit side. So I will say uh, incorrect stop order. And now this was supposed to be on the debit side. So if I put it once on the debit side, I am just cancelling that mistake that we made. So it means I have to put it twice on the debit side so that I can correct the mistake and then it's a naught balance and then I will still have to show the correct entry that must also be on the debit side. So if there's a mistake, you must determine who made the mistake. If the bank made the mistake, it will go on the bank state a reconciliation statement. And if we made a mistake, it will go on the cash receipts or cash payments or in my bank account. Okay, so for instance, we show that the bank, there was bank charges. Okay, so they've got on the debit side, bank charges. Of 40 rand. We haven't recorded it, so that means I must go and record it in my books and I will show on the credit side bank charges. Okay, then they've got interest on um, credit balance or interest on debit balance. Now I just want to show you with a different color pen. If it is interest on overdraft so it means that we have to pay it to the bank i will call it interest on overdraft 
because that is what I'm paying, the interest because my bank account is overdrawn. They can, instead of telling you it's interest on overdraft, they can say to you, interest on unfavorable balance. Or they can say interest on debit balance. Okay, now this is the one where you make more, most of the mistakes. Because you see debit balance and then you want to go and put the interest on the debit side. Where do I get this information? I get it from my bank statement. So if they say interest on debit balance, it means that they put it on the debit side of my account so it will go in my books on the credit side why will they put interest on the debit side if my account is overdrawn they can charge us interest so that means if it's interest on debit balance it's debit balance in their books so it will go in our books on the credit side if it's interest on current account Okay, and we receive 40 rand. That means uh, we've got a favorable bank balance and the bank is giving us 40 rand interest. Instead of saying interest on current account, they could also say interest on favorable balance. Or they can say interest on credit balance. Okay, now because they say it's on the credit balance, in their books it's on the credit side. So it means that I've got um, money in the bank and they are paying me interest. Now in one exercise, you can have interest on um, on unfavorable balance and you can have interest on a favorable balance. The reason for that is at the end of the month the business must pay all the expenses, salaries and they must pay their creditors. Then it sometimes takes a week or 10 days before they get in money from all their customers and in that time they have an unfavorable balance. Then as soon as the people start paying in their debts their balance changes to a favorable balance. And that means then I can have a favorable balance where I earn interest and I can have an unfavorable balance where I have to pay for interest. Okay, so for instance, they say that um, a debtor um, paid with a debit card. For sales then it means in our books we should we show that sales on the debit side 1340 and in their books they will show that debit card sales and they show 1430 so it means when I check my books, I see that the business made, made an entry for 1,340. They made an entry for 1,430. That means one of us made a mistake. So then you have to read carefully who made the mistake. So if we made the mistake, it means that we have to correct it in our books. If they make the mistakes, we have to correct it in the bank reconciliation. Okay, if we make the mistake, you will have to say sales was recorded on the debit side. If it's too little, I must add on the debit side. If I wrote too much on the debit side, I will correct it on the credit side. So I will take that 1430 I would subtract the 1340 and I would say there's a difference of 90 rand. Then 
this amount should be 1430 if they tell me that the bank statement is correct so i put too little on the debit side so i will go and record 90 to show that i've got more money in the bank and that i also have to credit my sales account now with a debit order and a stop order you must know the difference a debit order is for instance that I go and sign at the um, city council for my electricity or I sign this document at the uh, telephone company for my telephone account. That amount will change from one month to the next month. So where I signed the debit order, they will send the account to the bank and the bank will pay it on behalf of me. Where a stop order this was this one that we did there. Uh, I sign at the bank where a debit order I sign at, say, the city council. The stop order remains the same amount from one month, one month to the next month. The debit order changes from one month to the next. So say, for instance, there was a debit order in, on my bank statement to show that I pay telephone then I will show here that the telephone account will be debited. My bank account is credited with 130 rand. Okay. So what you must do is tick off the things in my bank statement with my cash receipts and cash payments. Then any entries that we still have to do we will record in our bank account or in our cash receipts and cash payments and any entries that the bank must record will go in the bank reconciliation statement. Then after I've done all these entries, I will add up and see which one is the highest. Now if I look at this bank account, the debit side is bigger than the credit side, so I will have a balance carried down to the next month and I will have a balance brought down from the previous month. That balance that I've got there is the one that will go in my bank reconciliation statement. Because that balance is on the debit side, you will show here debit balance according to bank account and I will go and show it on the debit side. If the bank had for instance a favorable balance in the beginning you would say credit balance according to bank statement and I would show that figure there. So you will go to your bank statement, tick everything off and the last amount on your bank statement on the last day that they recorded entries will go either on the debit side if it's a minus figure on the bank statement or it will go on the credit side if it's a positive figure. And the balance according to the bank statement will if it's a debit balance it will go on the debit side if the balance is brought down on the credit side it will go on the credit side so it means the entries inside the bank reconciliation not the balances the balances appear exactly as they appear on the bank statement or bank account these other entries we will do according to the books of the bank so how will the books of the bank record this and they will show deposits on the credit side and they will show money taken out of the business on the debit side and if i add up these two totals they should be the same